So neuroglia of the peripheral nervous system, we have satellite cells and Schwann cells. So here's the satellite cells, and they're all wrapping around the cell body. That's where they all, all go. Here's a satellite cell, and here's one here. And then we have the Schwann cells. Here's a Schwann cell, and here's a Schwann cell, and here's a Schwann cell, and here's another one. So, And then the yellow, here's the axon. And you notice they have little gaps. Here's a gap, and here's a gap, here's a gap, and here's a gap, and here's a gap. Okay, so there's always this little, little gap between these Schwann cells. The gap is about a micron. It's about a micron. Oops. What did I do? <laughs> I'm writing backwards. <laughs> Hold on a second. Get, right, get that, that out of there. So. Okay, I'm going to go back. I'm losing my mind. So one, one micron, one micrometer. There we go. <laughs> it's, uh, these gaps are about that, about, about that long. The Schwann cell itself is about 100 or so micrometers in length. So there's little tiny gaps between, um, between each, of the, each of the Schwann cells. And those little gaps are called... Each one is called a node of Ranvier, R-A-N-V-I-E-R. -E so you have to know that um, we're going to go through it here in a second. I just want to point it out on this slide. So, so the peripheral nervous system has two types of neuroglia, Schwann cells over here, and satellite cells. Schwann cells are the ones that myelinate the axons in the peripheral nervous system. That's opposed to the oligodendrocytes, which do that in the central nervous system. Next slide. So this is a picture actually um, out of your textbook, I think. Or maybe it is out of your, out of your regular book. Um, out of your, your guys' book. Um, no, I don't see it. This is out of, yeah, this is out of your textbook. So it uh, has, the, um, has just the table in it. So... But it's, it's the exact same picture as, as the one before. Next, next slide. Here's a picture that's a diagram that was out of the old textbook showing the satellite cells, the neuron cell body. So you have the satellite cell here, neuron cell body. And that neuron cell body is, uh, of this type of neuron is in what's called a ganglion, which is a collection of neuron cell bodies. And we'll see a, some pictures of those. Then we have Schwann cells that wrap around the axon. So there's your axon. So here's all the multiple layers. You can see all those different multiple layers. And there's the nucleus of the Schwann cell of Schwann cell. Okay. So next slide. It's just a, a zoomed out a little bit. Um, let's see. So the myosheath is really, it's, it's uh, purpose is to increase the nerve impulse speed and also aids the regeneration of peripheral nervous system axons. So if you sever an axon in a peripheral nervous system, it can actually regenerate and then the, it, the myelin sheath and the Schwann cells will actually help it um, uh, regenerate uh, as it regenerates. The central nervous system uh, cells don't tend to regenerate. Peripheral nervous system ones can it doesn't mean that they, if they regenerate, that they will have the same function. They'll touch the same things that they used to, but um, it is possible for them to re regenerate. Next slide. So the satellite cells, um, their processes are just flattened. So they flatten out and uh, wrap around the neuron cell body in the peripheral nervous system, the PNS. Next slide. Okay, so here's an actual uh, photomicrograph of cell bodies of unipolar neurons so we're going to talk about what unipolar, unipolar neuron is but the but this is pointing to the cell body here and so there's your cell body here's a nucleus here's a nucleus here so there's a cell body and they see all these little dots all the way around there 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 and there all those little dots those are all satellite cells all wrapped around the outsides of these um, of the um, uh, neuron cell bodies. Next slide. <clears throat> Here's another uh, picture picture of the um, of the uh, neuron cell bodies with satellite cells around them. So you can see the neuron cell body up here, showing the nucleus there, and then the satellite cells. You can see all of them 
and then you can actually see a process of one of one of them uh, reaching out this this whole bit here. So it's reaching out, trying to wrap around a cell body. Next slide. And here's just another picture of all the satellite cells wrapping around uh, neuron cell bodies. Next slide. So you can go back and examine those in the in the PDF for the PowerPoint that I've got that will be uploaded. So we have uh, here's the cell types that are in the central nervous system. Uh, we have uh, astrocytes or the uh, neuroglial cells. Of, should write in neuroglial cell types in the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. So here's the central nervous system ones, this, these four, and so this is the CNS, and then here's the PNS ones. So you have CNS, you have astrocytes, oligodendrocytes, microglia, and epididymal cells, and the PNS, you have Schwann cells and satellite cells. Next slide. Okay, so, so we talked about satellite cells, uh, oh, sorry, sorry talk about neuroglial cells, now we're going to talk about the neurons. So what is a neuron? Well, they can actually be the longest cells in the body. They can actually be over three feet long. You, you can have one cell stretch from your spinal cord all the way down to your fingertip. So it can go all the way down your arm or all the way down your leg from the spinal cord. There are three parts of a neuron. You have the cell body. You have two types of processes. You have the dendrites and you have the axon. And there's only one axon per uh, per uh, per neuron. And the dendrites receive information from receptors or other neurons that are nearby, and they send it as a uh, send that electrical signal to the cell body. And that electrical signal is a change in what's called the membrane potential. Okay, we're going to talk about what that is at the end of this, but just uh, remember it's an electrical signal. So the axon, uh, it's a process that's longer than dendrites. It extends from what's called the axon hillock can be a single process or can have branches called axon collaterals. Axon and axon collaterals end in axon terminals, and many axon terminals end in what are called synaptic in bulbs. Uh, synaptic in bulbs, uh, a synapse is a gap, and the synap synaptic in bulb uh, releases a neurotransmitter that goes across the synapse, across the gap. So there's a gap between the end of the neuron and the either another neuron or um, a or a say a muscle cell. The dendrites axons are, are processes extensions from the cell body. Okay, so so they so the dendrites and axon dendrites and axons all come off the cell body. In general, when we're talking about neurons, we're talking about motor, motor neurons, but same information applies to sensory neurons as well, pretty much. Uh, next slide. So here is a neuron. So here's your cell body. I'll just I'm going to check these off. So here's the cell body. So you can see the cell body there, and then we have dendrites sticking off there, and then we have one axon. So we saw this slide before. I just wanted to point this out again to you, just get you reoriented to where we are. And then all the little tiny dots that are around here, um, there, and there, and there, those are all neuro, neuroglial cells of one type or another, or the nucleus of neuroglial cells. Next slide. So uh, we have the cell body at the axon. There's the axon hillock. And there's a trigger zone. So the axon hillock is a triangular or really cone-shaped area at the cell body uh, where the axon starts. So it's changes in the membrane potential travel down to here, and then they, they basically collect there. They're summed. And if you get enough of them, then you decide whether, whether you're actually going to fire the, the axon or not. So you can have, so you have these dendrites feeding into the axon cell body, and they get some signals coming in. But the, the axon is not going to fire unless there's enough of those signals. So you have to have just enough uh, change in membrane potential to go and, and fire the axon. The trigger zone is the first part of the axon where the action potential begins, where the electrical signal starts. It's the end of the axon hillock. Next slide. So here is your cell body, once again. So cell body. And here is the axon hillock. Okay. So this would be your axon hillock portion here, okay? So that's your cone cone shaped uh, portion of the, of the of the neuron cell body going across here. 
They have dendrites coming off of here and there and there and there. Sorry, I'm not exact. Here, 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 here. Going off there, going off there, going off there. So there's all the dendrites sticking off here. And here's your axon coming here. So all, so the dendrites are all sticking back here, touching something else. There may, may be another neuron back here, okay, with dendrites, with an axon coming here. And maybe the dendrite is sitting here, and there's a little synapse, a little gap right there, okay, in between the two. And this axon fires and sends a signal down here. And then this dendrite brings a signal in into the cell body, but that's only one signal. And the cell body decides that's not enough signal to fire my axon, so I'm going to wait and see if I get more signals. So you may or may not fire an axon, depending on how many signals you coming in, have coming in from the dendrites. Next slide. So here's a simplified picture of a typical neuron. I'd use this picture because the one in your, in your book is a little complicated. So, but, uh, so here's the dendrites up here. Here's your cell body, which is called the soma. And here's the nucleus of the of the uh, of the neuron. Here's your axon. Is this whole portion down through here? Here's your Schwann cell making Schwann cells that make a myelin sheath. So Schwann cell includes the nucleus. Of the myelin sheath is just the uh, lipoprotein plasma membrane wrapped around the axon. Then you have uh, point out the nodes of Ron VA. Those are the little gaps between the Schwann cells there and there and there and there. And then we have axon terminals, and we, these end lots of times in little bulbs called synaptic end bulbs. So, all right, next slide. And, oh, one other thing to point out, you can think of a neuron in terms of regions. I'll just to give you this concept. There's a receptive region where it receives the signal, so there's all the dendrites are, and they have the conducting region where the axon is, so this is where the Cell body, body, you know, the soma, and the dendrites are all here. And it's not a good S. There we go. S. Okay. Here's the axon here. And then we have the axon terminals. Or and synaptic end bulbs. Okay, that's what those little rounded portions here at the, on the very end are. Those little those little guys there. And the axon terminals are these little link, long extensions of the axon. Those are also called telodendria. We're going to see that word here in a second. So that would be tello. Dendria. So you'll see that word here in a second. So anyway, but you can think of an axon as, as three different regions. A receptive region, or a region that conducts things, so the conducting region, and a secretory region, so it, which uh, takes the electrical signal and converts it to a chemical signal, because what you have are neurotransmitters transmitters are secreted or secreted at the at the end of all this next slide so here's your this uh, the picture out of uh your guy's book it's a little more complicated than, than i want to show in the very beginning but uh, so what you have so now you can see you have all your dendrites here you have your cell body called the soma okay so it, it shows it has this kind of bracket all the way around it and then we have, uh, there also, there's also, this is a cell body, so it has all the parts. So you have a mitochondria here. You also have um, a rough endoplasmic reticulum with ribosomes. And those are called nissle bodies in, uh, in the neuron. They have to give them a special name. Um, and you also have neurofibrils. Neurofibrils are these fibers, they're intermediate filaments um, that um, neurofilaments that they're inside the, uh, the cell body and, and then go down the axon. They help maintain the shape and also help transport things up and down the axon. Transport, there's actually proteins that go up and down the axon and they, uh, that's called um, down and back up is anterograde and retrograde transport. 
And those are important for uh, transport. Turns out those are important for transport sort of um, you don't really want this to happen, but it's important for proteins to go back and forth. It also helps viruses go back and forth. So if you have a virus that infects the end of, uh, of, of the axon, the virus gets inside the cell and can be transported up the cell back, back up to the cell body. So like a herpes virus can be transported up the cell by retrograde, retrograde transport. So that's, that's why I wanted to point that out down here. So retrograde transport can transport herpes viruses uh, up, up the uh, axon to the cell body where they then get into the nucleus and integrate in, this, in the DNA and then they hide there for, for the rest of your life. So, so that includes chickenpox viruses as well as the herpes virus as well as the shingles virus. So anyway, that was a little digression. <laughs> Sorry. So we have the nucleus of the cell body and we have neurofibrils and we, so then we have your, your axon hillock. So you can see it's kind of cone shaped. So you have the cone shape there, axon hillock region, and they have uh, also the points out the axon lemma, which I'm not going to talk about. But uh, then you have the axon. You can also have branches go off here. So here's a branch, and this is called an axon collateral. Okay, it, but it also has Schwann cells spaced nice evenly all the way down, and you have Schwann cells all the way down here. So each of these is a Schwann cell. Two ends, Schwann cell. And you can see them all going all the way down, all the way down the axon. And with a little tiny gap between them, called a node, or each one of them, multiple nodes of Ron BA. And then you have axon, you have telodendria, which are these branches at the end of the, uh, the axon. And then you have what are called axon terminals. Uh, your book refers to axon terminals. Uh, and I refer to these as synaptic end bulbs. Okay, bulbs. But uh, you can refer to them as either as either one. Um, I actually learned it as the telodendria were actually axon terminals and synaptic end bulbs were the actual bulbs at the end. But the, this book refers to them as as the branches at the end are all the telodendria and the axon terminals are the same as the synaptic end bulbs. So um, either way is fine. I, let's go with what the book is telling you. So let's do the telodendria or the branches and the axon terminals are the same as synaptic end bulbs. So then you have your target cells where the, uh, the axon touches and releases um, through the little synapse, little gap at the end, releases neurotransmitters which act on the target cell. But in this case, these target cells are glands you can tell because from these little tiny, oops, these, these little tiny dots down here. You can see all coming off. Those little dots are little secretory things. So, so these are little these cells down here are secreting something. All right, next slide. So, all right, we have a neuron and neuroglial cells. So we have the we have the cell body. My little, so the cell body. We have the nucleus. We have dendrites. We have neuroglial cells, and then we have your axon. So just so you, this is magnified 400 times. So that gives, that's a, a figure out of, out of your guys' book, figure 14.2 <clears throat> on page, uh, page, page 298. So next slide. So this is a picture out of the old book just to show a couple different things. It, it show it a little different perspective. Um, so here's your cell body is all up here with your dendrites. Uh, you have a nu nucleus. You also have a nucleolus. So you have uh, ribosomal RNA synthesis. You have your dendrites. So here's your cell body, referring to this whole region here. You have cytoplasm. You have mitochondria. You have Golgi bodies. You have all kinds of stuff in there. So there's a mitochondria in there. So here's a mitochondria in here. And here's another one here. And then you have Golgi bodies right here. So you can see this is just a regular cell. It has all the different, all the same parts as a normal cell, except for the fact that this one produces electrical impulse. It turns out there's a lot of other cells that produce electrical impulse, but these guys are specialized in that they have this long process called the axon, so which is yellow. It has this axon that, tr that will carry an electro electrical impulse all the way down to an end and then produces a chemical signal at the end. So, <clears throat> so you have 
So uh, neuron cells specialized in that it's not just that it has an electrical impulse. Other cells have that, but it also transmits this electrical signal all the way down the, um, the whole axon. Then you have an axon collateral, which is a branch. So you have axon here, the main axon. You have axon collateral going off this way to some other place. So you can actually have an axon could to, doesn't necessarily go down just touch one place. You can have multiple uh, collaterals go down and touch different, several, several different parts of, say, a skeletal muscle. So you can innervate several parts of a skeletal muscle from one axon, from one neuron cell. And then the at the very end, you're going to have the axon terminals, the telodendria and the axon terminals, <clears throat> the synap or synaptic end bulbs, <clears throat> or terminal end bulbs, you can call them that as well. Um, which, uh, and so, it's, so the axon spreads out even further and, and goes across a wider area at that point too. So that white... That goes, a wide, goes across a wider area at the end as well. That's a better way of saying that. So, so then you have, um, let's see, you have Schwann cells. Here's the nucleus of one. You have nodes of Braun VA, the gaps between the Schwann cells. Oh, back up here, sorry, axon hillock <clears throat> is this cone shaped structure here where the electrical impulse starts. And the trigger zone is this section right here. There. Okay. So that's where the kind of where it all all the impulses collect and they fire from there. And they rip, they zip down this uh, this axon. Then you have the Schwann cell shown here, and here's your nucleus there with the neuro lemma is where that's supposed to be an N. Oh, sorry, M M M A. Uh, so the neuro neuro lemma is where the nucleus is, and then you can see. The neural lemma, so you can see all these layers in here of the plasma membrane wrapping around there, producing insulation, and you can see it as well here. And so that's what I really want to show you was you can see all these layers in this picture really well. So and you all see what uh, the difference between telodendria and what are referred to as ax axon terminals or synaptic end bulbs or terminal end bulbs. You can call them any, any one of those three things. Next slide. <clears throat> So, classification of neurons, you have structural classification and we have functional classification. So we'll start with the structural classification. You can, how many processes come off the cell body? Well, you have unipolar, bipolar, and multipolar. So multipolar means you have multiple processes, lots of dendrites, one axon. These are your motor neurons and your interneurons, which are also referred to as association neurons. Those are most of your central nervous system neurons are multipolar. They're in there, either motor neurons or neuro, interneurons. Your bipolar, sorry, I'll go back to your uh, unipolar neurons. Unipolar neurons have one process. The dendrites and axon are the same. They are sensory neurons that bring information from the skin, muscles, and organs to the spinal cord. So those are, so unipolar are all, they're all sensory neurons. The multiple neurons are all motor neurons or interneurons. Then you have uh, some special neurons, these bipolar ones. These have two processes. They have one dendrite, one axon on either side of the cell body. They're found in the special senses, so in the eye and then the olfactory cells of the nose and the inner ear. Next slide. So here's what they look like. Here's unipolar. So we're going to start in multipolar and bipolar. We're going to start with multipolar, the one right here in the middle. So here's the cell body, and the way you tell is how many processes come off the cell body. Well, you've got a dendrite, 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 axon, dendrite. So all the processes come off the, the cell body, so that's multipolar. It has lots of different things coming off the, the main body. A unipolar, the dendrites and axons are merged into a single thing, so you only have one, you have one process coming off here. So that makes... You unipolar. A bipolar one down here at the end, so you have cell body here, and you have one process coming off this side, and another process, the axon, coming off this side. So you have two. There's one and there's two. So that means it's bipolar. This is one and this is lots. Lots of, of, of processes coming off the, the main cell body. So lots, you have multicellular, bipolar, you have two, and unipolar, you have, unipolar, you have one. The unipolar are, these are the sensory neurons, and these are your motor 
or interneurons. Next slide. So here's the picture of your guy's book. Uh, and then that's the picture on the top is blurry. So you, let's use the bottom one. So here's, so this is a motor neuron. So that's going to be multipolar because there's a cell body. So you have lots of, uh, lots of dendrites and an axon coming off the cell body. Here's a bipolar. So you have dendrites, axon coming off. And then you have, oh, sorry, that's a multipolar isn't it? because it has more dendrites. Sorry. <laughs> So I need to re read these before I start talking about them. And here's another multipolar. You have different uh, different processes, com processes coming off the same, same cell body. Here's a bipolar. Here's a cell body. So you have dendrites here and axon down here. And then you have a unipolar. So you have a cell body. And then you have, have one process coming off here. And it splits into two parts. So um, it's also called, the book calls it a pseudo-unipolar neuron. So because the, um, the axon and um, dendrites are, kind of, are all um, merged in the same, into the same thing, uh, the book refers to it as having two axons with no dendrites. Um, so, uh, but it's really, all you got to look at is how many um, processes come off the main cell body. So, and your functions for these, so your multipolar, polar, your multipolar are your motor neurons and interneurons. Your bipolar are sensory, and your unipolar, sorry, yeah, your unipolar are sensory. Uh, these are, but these are, the bipolar are only found in the special sense organs, such as the retina and the olfactory epithelium. The, uh, the unipolar ones are found associated with the touch and pain and vibrations receptors like we, like we talked about uh, earlier in the, in the slides. Next slide. So back to uh, that photomicrograph of uh, cell bodies in a dorsal root ganglion. So these are unipolar cell bodies. So these are in a dorsal root ganglion. So that means it's in the peripheral nervous system. So you have satellite cells wrapped around. So that because that's the um, neuroglial cells that you would have in the peripheral nervous system. Next slide. <clears throat> 